Good, good evening. So listen, I, I was in New York just for one day, and I came for the uh, General Assembly session this afternoon on uh, UNRWA, which basically was a follow-up uh, of the letter I addressed to the President. Uh, and uh, after having addressed this uh, letter, a group of uh, member states have requested a discussion to take place uh, about, uh, about uh, UNRWA. Um, basically, I have asked a few things to the member states right from the onset of my uh, remark uh, that there is a need to urgently, uh, urgently facilitate a political solution that will bring peace to Palestinian and Israeli, and in the meantime, to resolve the financial crisis confronting UNRWA so that we can continue to deliver on our mandate, but also on our life-saving operation in uh, Gaza. Um, I just want to remind, well, you, you all know, so no need to remind, uh, on the 26th of uh, January, we had the ICG uh, ruling, um, which is legally binding regarding the Palestinian in uh, Gaza. And uh, basically, it requested at the time uh, to Israel and others to take all the necessary measures to prevent uh, irreparable, irreparable uh, damages. And uh, obviously, this included uh, an increase, an urgent increase uh, of the provision of um, humanitarian assistance. Uh, since that time, what have we seen? In reality, assistance has halved, has not increased. If I compare the flow of aid going into Gaza between January and February, it has decreased by 50%. So we had uh, growing, alarming, uh, I would say, uh, uh, humanitarian uh, indicator. I, I usually describe this, this humanitarian situation as a kind of a uh, you know, a uh, crisis of all the possible uh, superlative. If we, if we look at uh, uh, the number of people who have been killed or reportedly killed, 30,000 in only 150 days, it's staggering. It's uh, certainly the conflicts where, conflicts where we have seen the highest number of uh, children, the highest number of journalists, the highest number of health workers, the highest number of uh, UN workers, uh, who have been uh, killed in such a short period. If you look at the overall population, it's basically 5% of the population which has been either reportedly killed, injured, or missing. And again, this in la la last uh, five months, uh, you keep hearing from our colleagues from Dublin show that doctors are amputating the limbs of injured children without uh, anesthetic. But the worst into this, uh, is a region which has never, never, ever encountered hunger, has widespread hunger, and we even have uh, uh, unfolding uh, under our eyes a uh, uh, looming famine, uh, especially uh, in the north, uh, but there are also other pockets uh, of uh, starvation. Um, you also, um, this terrible, horrible uh, tragedy of uh, last uh, week, uh, where you have a uh, hundred of people, hungry, hungry people, queuing desperately to get uh, uh, food assistance, uh, and uh, while waiting thing for this, uh, more than hundred of them have been killed, uh, and uh, hundreds have been also reportedly injured. And you have also in the Gaza Strip uh, today, according to UNICEF, uh, seventy thousand orphan uh, children who have been uh, orphaned and uh, completely abundant in uh, one of the most dangerous places on earth. It is also in this context uh, that we talk about a possible military off offensive. We talk about a ceasefire. I hope we will have a ceasefire that would bring respite uh, to the population, would also allow the release of the hostages. But on the other hand, we keep hearing about a possible offensive uh, in the middle of, uh, you know, a sea of uh, uh, displaced people in, uh, in uh, Rafa. So basically, while the description is already horrendous when it comes to the situation in Gaza, would such an offensive, uh, offensive took place, uh, uh, we can only fear that the worst is still yet to come while we have felt that we have already reached the worst. Today, I also updated the General Assembly about uh, 
uh, the allegation of 12 uh, UNRWA uh, staff uh, who allegedly have uh, participated, participated to the uh, horrendous attack of uh, October uh, 7. Uh, I also stress uh, that uh, as far as I'm concerned, at the time I have received uh, the allegation, I have not received any substantiated or evident, uh, uh, information or evidence, uh, but, this, but because of the gravity uh, of the allegation, I have taken swift action, the first one uh, being to terminate uh, the staff uh, immediately followed by an OIOS uh, investigation. And in addition, you know that the Secretary General has also commissioned a uh, review of the risk management uh, of uh, the agency uh, um, to look at uh, basically how do we prevent, raise awareness about uh, neutrality breaches within the organization. And once a violation is brought to our attention, how is the agency, in fact, uh, uh, dealing with this? Uh, this is the review undertaken by, um, uh, under the leadership of Catherine Colonna, former Minister of Foreign Affairs of uh, France, uh, with the support of the Free Scandinavian uh, uh, Institute. Uh, the first um, uh, recommendation and heads uh, uh, will be shared with the agency as from March 20, and the final report uh, is expected uh, uh, as from uh, April 20. Um, but you also know that uh, at the time the allegation were known, uh, 16 countries have decided to temporarily pause the contribution to the agency for a total of about uh, $400 million. Uh, I have also to stress here that not everybody has paused. Uh, we still have a number of countries uh, in Europe who have decided to keep, maintain, even increase the contribution uh, to the agency. And uh, you have seen that a few days ago, I also welcome the European Commission uh, decision to release uh, its contribution of uh, $50 uh, million. Um, I have also informed the General Assembly, Assembly today that the agency is facing uh, you know, fierce campaign, uh, uh, which aim to undermine uh, its uh, uh, credibility. But I have also to say, as far as I'm concerned, uh, with the aim to end uh, its uh, 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 operation, um, there have been quite a number of uh, allegations, uh, misinformation, disinformation, uh, or at least unsubstantiated uh, 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 a statement uh, uh, which are primarily shared uh, through social media or through the media, but not necessarily shared uh, with uh, the UN. Now, there have been also aspects I wanted to draw the attention about uh, uh, UNRWA uh, with a member of the General Assembly, that um, in fact, uh, uh, we are in a situation where there is also a political decision to try to eliminate the presence of uh, UNRWA. Uh, you have uh, heard the Israeli representatives this morning at the General Assembly. Uh, he repeated what the Prime Minister has already said, that there will be absolutely no role for UNRWA uh, 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 the day after uh, in, uh, in uh, Gaza. Uh, we have uh, uh, also seen over the last few weeks uh, a number of different attempts, uh, such as uh, uh, attempt to evict uh, UNRWA from its head headquarter in uh, East uh, Jerusalem, but also from a nearby uh, vocational training uh, center. Uh, we have seen that there are attempts at the legislative level, uh, at the Knesset, uh, to, uh, to uh, seek to prohibit any activity of UNRWA uh, in uh, East uh, uh, Jerusalem. Uh, when it comes to our staff um, in the West Bank, uh, uh, our staff for the time being is prevented since October 7 to reach uh, the headquarter and there have been additional measures uh, undertaken uh, with the aim to dismantle the agency. I have also seen over the last uh, a few weeks that they have been, uh, that the calls to dismantle the agency have gained some uh, traction and I explain in fact to the General Assembly was it at stake behind uh, this uh, call uh, the, the, in, the short in the short term? And the most obvious one 
is our ability to respond to the humanitarian crisis in uh, Gaza. For the time being, UNRWA remain the main operational platform, uh, supporting all the other agencies uh, to uh, operate. And that uh, would UNRWA further be on the mind right now, it would also not only have uh, an impact uh, on the ability to comply, uh, to comply with the IC, uh, ICG order, but also to comply with the Secretary Council call for increased uh, uh, humanitarian assistance uh, in the Gaza st uh, Strip. Uh, the second aspect I wanted to draw the attention to the member of the GA is that, you know, if let's let's imagine that tomorrow we have uh, an, a ceasefire, uh, the ceasefire, and we build on the ceasefire, it will take some time until there is the necessary confidence of the international community to to largely broadly invest in the Gaza Strip. I think uh, that will that will t be the case today. There is a, a time bound genuine political uh, package on the table, which garners the support uh, of all the parties. Until Saturday, it's difficult to imagine that billion of dollars will go into the Gaza Strip. So there will be a long day in between. And here I remind that the unicity of what UNRWA is all about. Uh, UNRWA is primarily a human development organization. It's an agency primarily providing uh, government-like services. Uh, and uh, the handing over of the, its services is you, uh, expected to be done with an emerging administration or with a state. Uh, there is absolutely no UN agency or INGOs uh, which is providing direct uh, education to half a million girls and boys uh, 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 in the Gaza Strip, for example. Uh, and we also know that uh, if we have uh, an emerging authority industry, whatever authority will be, they certainly will not have uh, the ability to provide uh, uh, such large scope, uh, I would say, uh, critical services. But we should also not forget that in the Gaza Strip, the population is also deeply uh, uh, traumatized, uh, among them the children. And the more we will long, uh, wait to bring them into an education environment, uh, the more we are also sowing uh, the seeds uh, for future hatred uh, or future resentment or revenge. So I was also drawing the attention about uh, the risk uh, by just dismounting onward today to, at the same time, sacrifice uh, an, un uh, an entire generation of uh, children. But last but not least, uh, I also draw the attention about uh, the political meaning of uh, 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 getting rid uh, of UNRWA, which is a real uh, justification, certainly today. Uh, the attack against UNRWA seek, in reality, to eliminate its role in protecting the right of uh, the Palestinian refugees, uh, and possibly uh, uh, as uh, an agency acting as a witness uh, uh, to the plight. Uh, we have seen that uh, after having been quoted so many times to, uh, to submission and to rulings, uh, uh, the attack against the agency have also uh, significantly uh, increased. Uh, um, again, and we keep saying, you know, if, 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 if uh, October 7 would not have taken place this year, we would be talking about the 75th year of uh, UNRWA, uh, of a lasting temporary organization, which is nothing else uh, than the collective failure of the international community for, of not having promoted a, a, a durable, lasting, and fair uh, political solution. And um, my intent at that time was to open a discussion about uh, but what if there will never ever be a political solution. Now, we are in a different uh, situation where in the region say, there have been seismic transformation uh, taking place, uh, which has basically also triggered again an awareness about the importance uh, of promoting a uh, political uh, solution. And again, after 75 years of uh, temporary, I would say, 
uh, uh, lasting temporary uh, existence uh, if really we are genuine with the promotion of a political solution, UNRWA remain an instrument at the disposal of the international community to succeed in this trajectory, to make sure that uh, the transition leading to this solution uh, be uh, successful, and that would be the day uh, the agency uh, would be uh, phasing out. So just to end, I have placed three requests to the GA today. The first, I repeat a little bit what I said at the beginning, at the beginning, but to facilitate the long overdue political process that can bring lasting peace to Palestinian and Israeli. And that's the context in which we should chart the transition of the agency. Meanwhile, um, and because of the uh, precarity of the financial situation, according to the member of the General Assembly, to match their expectation with the mandate being provided to the agency with uh, resources, uh, uh, basically. Um, but also, the third request, uh, to ensure that any alternative uh, to UNRWA for providing services to Palestinian refugees, and this is also a discussion I initiated two years ago through the partnership, uh, which backlashed at that time with the ecosystem and the host of country, but that, uh, and I think we certainly have to reopen this discussion, but the partnership needs to be undertaken in a way that it does not undermine the right of uh, the Palestinian refugees, but also the right uh, of the Palestinian for self-determination. So that, that were my messages today uh, to the GA, free prong, the short-term impact on the humanitarian response, the medium-term on the transition, but also the longer term one being the political one. So I think I will uh, stop here. Thank yes, you. thank uh, you so sorry, much.